we have this question. I've read that some personalities can join in the work, some are neutral, and can be allowed to remain for some time, and others have to be eliminated. How are personalities eliminated? I don't really know who this question is from, but I'm going to assume that they don't really mean personalities. I'm going to assume that they've misstated their question, that they want to know how people are eliminated from the work. How personalities are eliminated from the work is they're not. We work on false personality here. So it's not really eliminated. We're working on it. And we not, we're not ever going to eliminate it. Hopefully what we'll do is make false personality passive so that the essential you, the real part of you, or the part of you that is more real, can become more active as false personality becomes more passive. So I'm going to assume that the question is not about personalities at all, but about actual people. And then it would be some personalities can join in the work, some are neutral and can be allowed to remain for some time, and others have to be eliminated. There are, and it's true that there are certain types of personalities that don't do well with the work. But how they're eliminated is a number of ways. Gurdjieff was a master at eliminating personalities or people who, and, and Gurdjieff was a master at it because he understood the way it works, the way this world is, the way this world works. When I say this world, I mean this system of 48 laws under which we exist. And until we can get ourselves under a higher system, under better influences, we're stuck with this. The only way we can, we can go up or we can go down. But no one can stay in the same place. You can't stay still in this life. This life is like a conveyor belt. You're on the conveyor belt going the wrong way. Because the way this life leads is the wrong way. It's not to being more conscious. It's not evolving. It's not becoming better. It's actually decaying and becoming worse. If you don't do something, we were talking this morning about your brain age. If you don't do something about your brain, it will decay. If you don't do something about your body, it will look like it does, which isn't the way it looked when you did something about your body. When did you do something about your body? When you were younger, when you played sports, when you had activities, when you were involved, when you exercised, when you walked, when you did things. Now you don't look like that. And it's not because you're older. It's because your habits have changed, your exercise habits have changed, and your eating habits have not. You still eat like you did when you exercised, and you don't exercise. So that all has to go somewhere. So the way Gurdjieff eliminated people was some people he just suggested they didn't belong. He could see that they didn't belong. He could tell right away that some people were not fit for this work. They're not going to be able to do it. If you coach a basketball team and you have a three-foot person come in who wants to try out for the team, you can let them try out for the team, but they're never going to play ball on your team if everybody else is seven feet tall. It just isn't going to happen unless they come up with a new basketball game where a three-foot person can be used for something other than putting the ball in the basket. So, And, and it's possible. That could happen. But what Gurdjieff did is he would suggest to some people that they were not fit for the work. And that was enough. They would go away. And some people he drove away. And how he drove them away is he would because he was a master at seeing what was going on with us, he could see what was going on with a person. He could see what their chief features were. He could see what was blocking them, what was standing in the way, what was preventing them from realizing their true nature, what was preventing them from unfolding the parts of false personality that were blocking them from realizing their essential selves. And he would lean on those parts. The perfect example is Ospensky, how Gurdjieff leaned on Ospensky. And if you read the book In Search of the Miraculous, you'll see that Gurdjieff was relentless in his attacks on 
Ospensky's pride. Ospensky had an enormous overweening pride. And so Gurdjieff would stand him up in front of people and have him do something, teach something or say something. And then Gurdjieff would, while he was still there, tear it all apart in front of everybody. And this made Ospensky crazy. I mean, he just couldn't stand this. He, his, his vanity and his pride could not tolerate this. So as the story goes, obviously, Ospensky ended up leaving Gurdjieff and thinking that he was a madman. Yet, he kept his system and made a lifelong study and practice of it and taught it to groups in different places. Some people are not prepared for the work. Some people are not going to be able to do it like the basketball player, like the three-foot basketball player. He's not going to be able to play in the big leagues. You know, he may be able to play on a, a basketball team with a bunch of three- or four-foot people, but he's not going to play with the big boys. He's not going to pay, play with the people who are seven feet tall. It's just not going to happen. And so how they're eliminated is usually they eliminate themselves. At least around here, I find that people eliminate themselves. Because eventually... The truth has to be told. And, and eventually, when everyone starts telling themselves the truth, like Diana did this morning, other people start telling themselves the truth, and then they start talking about it. Well, sooner or later, it's a matter of time. It's just a matter of time before the truth slips out about someone else. And when that happens, if they're not inclined to tell themselves the truth, or to look at the truth, or to observe themselves, then they suffer. And because they suffer... And because they don't want to suffer, because they have no reason to suffer, no cause to suffer, they have to take that suffering and turn it into something else. And what that is then is blame shifting. Then it has to be put outside of them. And they eliminate themselves. So most people in the work, from my perspective, eliminate themselves. If I give them enough rope, they'll hang themselves. I don't have to eliminate anybody. I don't have to tell people to leave. I can suggest that possibly they'd be happier somewhere else. And I have done that. And then people go and they're not any happier anywhere else, but they imagine that they will be. And that's enough to get them to go and at least look, which is better than looking is better than sitting in one place and being totally unconscious until you die. So at least they have a chance. If you throw them in the water, maybe they'll swim. If not, oh well. So that's a tough question because there are so many different ways to handle the elimination of personalities, as it were, or getting rid of people.